Well, thanks for watching. This is BargeGuy.com, and I don't know why we started out with this, but this is the uh, the shop guy's bathroom. I think it explains itself pretty clear there. So let's go out into the shop where everything really happens. Today we decided to uh, make a shop video, a little bit of a tour. Most people haven't seen our shop or uh, even aware of it, which is okay. So bargeguy.com is a fabrication shop started four years ago in Clearwater, Florida. And we manufacture barges. We repair barges, we build cranes, we build hydraulic power packs, pneumatic drivers, you name it, we build it. We built uh, custom table bases for a restaurant a few weeks ago. It doesn't matter, we're a full service welding shop. Even though we build barges, we will weld anything. And that's a key to starting a business. You have to be open-minded. You have to be willing to do any job that comes in the door that you're capable of doing. And just be friendly to the customer. You know, most people don't have a clue what they want when they walk in the door. And the best thing you can do is show them pictures of previous projects or they can see what's going on in the shop. I believe it's important to have a clean shop. Today it's extremely clean because we were getting ready to shoot a video, but on any, any given day, you can walk into our shop and it's safe, clean, and it's gonna be noisy, so by the door. We got earplugs, uh, breathing mask, gloves, safety glasses, and all that good stuff. So if a customer comes in and it's loud, we will suit them up with all the safety stuff. Remember, most people aren't used to the noise that we create, we are, but that's just part of our life. So I'm trying not to get into too much detail on every little item in the shop, I guess we'll say. I've watched uh, plenty of videos on YouTube and it's how to start a welding shop. Every video, that's what it is, how to start a welding shop. But when you uh, watch the video, it's, uh, it's a guy in a garage or he's got a one stall little unit and he's got a welder and maybe not much more than that and that's fine i mean that's you got to start that way i started that way but i haven't seen any videos of people with medium-sized shops the in between between starting and getting to a, a a big shop so we started out i started out uh 300 dollars in my pocket four years ago into a little shop on the side of a building that was uh, under 1500 square foot. The ceiling was, oh man, it was only about 10 foot tall. Everything we had to do, I'd be careful, hit the ceiling. And it was just, it was a pain in the butt, but it was a place to start. It's all I could afford. And it's what I had and I made the best of it. We built probably three, four barges in that shop before we had moved to this bigger shop. And everything, you know, takes time. Uh, everything in the shop, and we'll go through it, is either, well, not either, it's used. I bought almost every single thing in the shop used off of Craigslist or Facebook Market, cleaned it up, repainted it, fixed it, and using it. The only exception to that is we got a couple of brand new welders that I just could not find used at the time that we needed them and just bought new. So um, in the video, you see that we're Miller fans, which is, uh, don't hold that against me, but my whole life I've used Miller. So uh, you gotta realize that you can do almost anything you want with a welding table, a grinder, a couple basic clamps and a welder. And from there, you can build your future. It's, it's really up to you. If you want to work hard and put out quality work and, and be really good at the customers, fair and prices, uh, you will make a great living in welding. This is a, uh, an invention of ours. Nobody has it. We're working on our patent. This is a pneumatic pile driver. We're not afraid to try new items, test them out in the market. 
we're in the marine industry and we're growing like crazy because we're doing things that nobody else is doing and that's another important thing if you're going to open a business if you want to do railings stairs uh, build trailers um, those kind of things that's fine a lot of people do that but that's what you got to remember is a lot of people do it and because a lot of people do that it drives the price down and of course there's always exceptions to price and what you get and what you can charge but if you start a business and honestly when I, I start this business it wasn't to be building barges but that's what ended up making money and it's a niche market and I found out that there's only a handful of people in the whole country that do it and to be honest with the position that we're in now we're one of the few companies that builds a turnkey barge from start to finish in our own shop where a customer can come pick it up with a title and use it the next day I don't know of anybody that does all that. So we do all the wiring, we do all the hydraulics, we do the painting, the prepping for painting. We uh, go by all Coast Guard standards. We, I've read well, five or six boat building books. There's not a, a ton of stuff out there to be, to be found, but if it's out there, I have read it. And whatever you're getting into, get as much knowledge possible that you can. The internet's free. You can read. I guarantee I got, well, I got 14,000 pictures in my phone from three years, and it's all research, pictures of stuff, things on the internet, building, designs, it, uh, anything to do with our industry and the field that I'm in, I research it. And between the, uh, I'll be honest, I got probably close to uh, 35 years of fabrication experience. So this isn't my first go around with a business and I'm glad that it's not my first go around because the first one was in Michigan, which was fine. We had a really good shop. I was starting to make money. I had a couple employees and decided to move to Florida and I shut it down. It was a good learning experience. At the end, I left, uh, really didn't make any money but a good learning experience out of it and I wasn't in debt so uh, moved down to Florida worked for a couple other guys uh, started another shop that was industrial repair which was airport equipment and again there was some fabrication involved in that I did that business and we had a breach of contract got screwed to no end I lost everything. I lost the house. I lost every single thing that I had to the point of five years ago, four and a half years ago, I was counting my change to see if I could have an extra beer that week. And an extra beer meant two instead of one. So you want to work hard. And if you want to put out a good product, you can open any shop and be successful. And the key to being successful is quality products, good workmanship. Visually, it looks good. Being ahead of the game, being ahead of other people, you know, striving to be the best. It sounds easy, but it's not always easy. There's been a lot of hardships. There's been, oh, I, I mean, in four years and in the last two years, so now I got uh, four or five employees, and I'm sure they're gonna watch this. There's been, there's been many times where I could have easily hung up my hat and said, I've had enough. You know, it's uh, people not paying you, people stealing stuff. We had a barge stolen a year and a half ago for $12,000. You're like, well, how can that happen? And well, that's a great question. We had it in a secured facility behind the gate with guards and the guy still got it by some technicality saying that he's the owner and they were afraid to get sued and they didn't want to hold it. Even though he never paid me, 
there's pieces of shit out there that will screw you. So just imagine also one day you're expecting to get paid $12,000 and now you don't have $12,000. Well, in a, a startup business that, which I don't think I said, and maybe I did, but I'll repeat it. Uh, I started with $300. I've never taken a bank loan. I don't run accounts. I pay cash for everything that comes in the shop. Every piece of equipment in here is paid for. Uh, except for this forklift here, I got, uh, it's a rental, but outside I got a bigger 16,000 pound forklift that I started with. It's 1976, it runs perfect, had to do a little bit of work to it, but that's all I could afford. So the key to me, I think, making it, and I think I finally made it, after all the years of all the hard work and all the weekends, I think my business has made it. So four years into it, I put every dime back into the shop. Literally, every, all my money. It's a good feeling. At this point, if the economy goes down or something happens, I own everything. There's nothing for somebody to collect. Our business is in, in good standings and we can take a, a slow time. I don't have nothing to pay the bank. They can't come get nothing. And that's a great, great position for your company to be in. And we got equipment. We got a lot of equipment. I believe in having the right equipment for the right job. Now this beauty is one of my favorite ones. And it's old. This is, as far as I can tell, 1930s. I saved it from going to the scrapper. It works fine. Been trying to repaint it throughout the years slowly, not really getting it done. But this shear is 10 foot wide, we'll cut quarter inch aluminum, uh, 60 61 sheets all the way across it all day for us, and we use it every single day. Uh, we got some material racks over here that are important. Anything under 12 feet, we store in there, which, you know, keeping things organized is so important to know what you had. There's so much money into stock, supplies. Uh, it, it's just, it's an easy way to throw away money. Uh, over here, and I briefly mentioned earlier that build, build your own stuff. You know, you can go out and spend a lot of money on carts and this and that, but why? You, you know how to build it. So this is one of the first things I built when I moved in the shop was this rolling salt cart it doesn't matter we can take it anywhere in the shop we can cut aluminum it catches it all down here in the bottom and look at all those shavings that would go on the floor and you're just constantly cleaning up down here there's a table saw in there so when we do our uh, uh from w plastics we just roll it out and we cut it to whatever we need down below we got storage tools we got this great well saw. It's an older well saw. It's semi-automatic. It'll run parts through there all day long if we want it to. You know, don't be afraid to buy used equipment. If you can work on it, even if you don't know how to work on it, it's so simple. Ask somebody, look on the internet. Uh, we got another rack over here, which is where our aluminum comes in. It's a little low right now because we're at the end of a couple of projects. Next week, it'll be so full that it's going to be a pain in the butt but uh, it's raining outside, so we don't have the doors open, but the material comes in the back door, comes down through the rack to the saw, finished product, goes out onto a uh, rolling cart. We bring it in the other shop. We got all of our fire cabinets. We got a big roto, well, it's not big. It's truly not big. It's, it's 10 foot, but it's a roto die. Hydraulic press, we can bend and build our own tanks and our own stuff here, and, it, and to me, it's one of the most important things to me is to be independent, that we can build any part that we want if we need to, and we don't have to wait on somebody else to get it done. Here's a pilot house that uh, we're in the middle of manufacturing for one of my personal barges that should be done probably middle this summer. We got uh, sheets waiting to be sheared. Again, another rolling cart, a sheet rack, Hydraulic press that we don't really get into much anymore. That'd be more of uh, the maintenance I used to do. Uh, it's a little bit of a mess, I'm sorry, but this is actually a tube roller that I built. 
I can roll arches, circles, whatever I want, up to, I've done all the way up to uh, four by four by quarter inch steel square tube with it. It's a, it's a beast of a thing, but I built it myself. Um, it's how you save money. It's come up on the weekends, you know? Build your stuff. This is a, um, these are rotisseries and they're on casters again. They'll come out, we can take a barge, we can put it up in the air, pick it up or down by three feet and rotate it around if we want. It makes life so much easier. Got a couple more Miller welders here, 350, 350P, uh, 252. We got some aluminum uh, racks. These are hydraulic power unit racks that are just waiting for the engines and the uh, guts to be installed on it. Again, we briefly talked earlier, but we do hydraulics. Here's a spool of a couple hundred feet of uh, half inch hose on there. Uh, rack back here with, you know, again, hydraulic air hose, more hydraulic hose. Behind here we have a, normally have aluminum in here and that's why it's got the carpet on the top of all these on this rack. But uh, we're at the end, like I said, of some builds so we don't have stock in here. But we lay 20 foot long sheets of aluminum here. So when we're waiting to go build a barge, uh, it's the storage for it. Again, we got another material cart here to roll stuff around and another one. Again, it is so important to have mobility of carts. Instead of somebody carrying something, they put it on the cart, they roll it down, nobody's gonna get hurt. Uh, this cart is kind of my problem child. Been waiting to build a nice uh, rack for all the electrical on there. Uh, we got old hospital cart here. I think I paid like 30 bucks for it, but all the drawers are full and labeled of all the products that we use in here that we need. And that's half the battle is being organized. One day the guys made, I mean, this is simple rack, but it's got the cutoff wheels, grinding wheels, steel, aluminum, all organized out. And then this one, we got um, most of our lifting stuff, shackles, uh, straps, the, the, the uh, weigh-in, scale couldn't think of the right word but we can weigh up to 3,000 pounds and anything that we build that goes in the air we weigh it and we mark it so the customer knows the exact weight of it it's important to us to let the customer know what they're lifting because everything is not capable of lifting a million pounds uh, we got nut and bolt bin bins where we got uh Grade five, grade eight, stainless steel, all here in the shop. There's nothing worse than going out and having to chase stuff. So my theory of a business is probably a little skewed by nobody's ever helped me and the banks have never, you know, wanted to give out a loan. You're new in the business, you're this, you haven't been in there enough years. It's always something that they don't want to give a loan for. And so I've done it on my own and it's made me more uh, aggressive lately to, I don't put up with shit. We've had a few customers that have been questionable and I just, uh, I refuse to do the job with them. One guy, I, I returned the deposit after just demand, 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 demands. And I'm glad I'm in a spot that I don't have to take every job like I used to. And because after four years, our quality and our reputation speaks for itself. And that's one of the most important things is quality work, happy customers, that uh, you can't beat it. That is the best advertisement available. Uh, safety for you guys, you gotta, you know, your guys are not numbers. And that's why I've, I've never worked in Actually, I have, I regret it. I worked for the government for a little bit, which was, well, I guess I won't even say any more than that. But I don't fit in there, okay? I don't like being a number. I don't like just that, that whole thing. And when my guys come and I hire them, I tell them straight out, I said, there's three, four of us in here. There's five, maybe six guys. I said, we're family. Do you want that shop that you're just a number and you can be a jackass? This is not the shop, okay? 
I'm gonna treat my guys with respect. I'm gonna pay them well, and I do. Uh, most of the guys are getting a $2 raise within the first year if they're doing what they say they can do. And if they can't do it, okay, let's look at it. Employees are your assets. Straight out, they are what makes you the money. So if you don't teach them or help them, then how are they gonna learn, okay? Uh, my 30 some years of fabrication, I took one college class to learn how to TIG weld because I didn't know anybody knew how to TIG weld. I didn't know anybody with a TIG welder. So I took a, what, two and a half month long class, <laughs> which is MIG and TIG. I already knew how to MIG weld. I aced the class in the last seven, 10 days of class was on how to TIG weld. <laughs> it got me